I'm Chandani Parikh. I voice characters like Lola Bunny from Looney Tunes, Faro Zahn on Genshin Impact, Lacey St. Clair and Alice on Nickelodeon's Loud House, as well as several characters on Big Nate like Jenny Jenkins, Sabina Shaw, and Mrs. Pope. I also play Holly Quinn on Batwheels. Uh, but you know, I think I really know I made it, because I am actually here live in conversation with Amber the Fangirl. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is an, uh, an actress, a voice actress. Uh, she's best known as the, she's known as being the voice of Harley Quinn in Bat Wheels, um, Jenny in Big Nate, Alice and Lacey is that I believe Lacey St Clair in The Loud House, um, Lola Bunny yeah. in Bugs Bunny <laughs> Builders. Um, she's also been in The Mighty Ones. She's been in Genshin Impact. Uh, she's been in Mobius Final Fantasy. She's also done uh, Solve the Podcast, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, Suspense, which is a TV show. My guess is Shandani Burek. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. I, I, I do, do forgive me if I did pronounce it I, wrong. I, I, I think you right? I think you said it perfectly from what I just heard. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Nothing stood out. It sounded smooth. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, yes. Thank you so much for having me, Amber. <laughs> you're welcome. First of all, I love your shirt. I love it so much. It's like the little thing, the bat wheels thing. What were you gifted exactly. it? Wait, who yes, it exactly. Me? It was, it was from the show. So they gave everybody oh, these right. shirts and. Oh, yeah, actually, cute. I ran into uh, Mick Wingert in one of the sessions, and he was wearing it. I'm like, I need to start wearing it to my session. <laughs> so yeah, we all got a t-shirt. <laughs> wow! Oh my gosh! And yeah. pretty much, you've just you've only really started out in these past few years. Yet you've got some proper good uh, credits under your belt. You're you're already the voice of Harley Quinn. You're you're in a Warner Brothers Bugs Bunny show. You've been in The Simpsons. You've been in The Loud House. Oh my gosh! But then people like don't think of the auditions that you've done because like I've probably done more yes. auditions than actual projects. So exactly. like exactly. How how did you start out um, as a voice? Have you always wanted to be a voice actress? How, what, where, that's oh, yeah. Like that. Absolutely. I, I, I did always want to be a voice actress. It was one of those things that you just kind of think is a pipe dream was so far away. And I was in college and uh, growing up, I always was reading it like I was a preschool teacher in college. So I would read to kids. And, and I just had so much fun doing the voices and being silly. And throughout my years, I've always either volunteered at a library or I've always kind of kept that going where I can always practice different voices and my reading skills, which is very important. And I believe I was in, I was teaching one of my preschool uh, classes and Fridays they get to watch cartoons because it's a Friday. <laughs> so wow. we're watching cartoons and we're watching SpongeBob and as we're watching SpongeBob, I'm like, this show is hilarious. And, uh, you know, and of course, like everyone, I've always researched the names of who's the actor, who are these people. And of course, yeah. Tom Kenny, I'm like, that guy is talented. <laughs> like, I know I want to play with him. I want to play in this world. Um, so when I moved to L.A., I just, yeah, I, I went for it. I started training with the coaches, Googled top you know, voiceover coaches in Los Angeles that were working actors and started making my appointments and getting all the training in so yeah wow who who were some of the people that you uh studied under who who took you under that uh, yeah so actually the first first couple of people that I uh, saw and this is all because I was just getting to know the voiceover industry and the big names and everything which I knew because I know Animaniac so I always knew you know all the characters there Tress McNeil uh June Foray like I always knew all the voice actors yeah. Um, but it was, I was trying to go for people that I would recognize. So I studied with uh, Richard Horowitz. I had one session with him. Yeah. So he was the first one I ever studied with. He was incredible. And I learned so much in that. And his advice was, yeah, you have to, like, it's acting. You have, to, it's, it's not just voices. And I got it instantly, of course, but I was like, wow, yeah, it's, there's so much depth in these roles and these characters in order to bring them to life. So I also studied with uh, Charlie Adler is my biggest one. He's probably my game changer when it comes to how I was recording my auditions, how I would dissect a script, make it mine, throw in improv if I needed to. He was the one who really redirected me into what I what I know today, <laughs> I could say. Oh, 
that's really cool. I find it really interesting how all these people they started out by taking classes themselves. Like, uh, let's say, for, I think, I think, like, let's just say, for example, such and such, they took acting classes from Doris Butler, and this big uh, voice actor is now doing voiceover classes, and you can study with them and then maybe in a few years time you could be yeah. uh, providing voiceover classes so you're just it's basically like passing it yes. down passing the torch down over the years through generations completely yeah. yes absolutely yes yeah so I don't think there's a lot of people who can say they've voiced Harley Quinn and Lola Bunny actually um so <laughs> I've got to, I've obviously got to start with the uh yes. one of, of the stuff that you've done um well first of all Bugs Bunny Builders I mean you've taken on such a big role Lola Bunny originally voiced by Kat Susie um so yeah. like you know were you asked to make the role your own or were you asked to take inspiration how did that role sort of come about because I know you're working with a lot of the other series regulars like Jeff Bergman Bob Bergen, Eric Bowser, and a few other people. Yeah, yeah, Fred Tattershaw, all of them, right? Fred, Fred Tattershaw, yeah, sorry. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah, all of them. Um, yeah, I, I received the audition, and it is a much younger version of Lola Bunny. So, of course, the original OG Kath Sothi, her Space Jam version is this sultry, very you know, seductive, yet she's still a tomboy. She's still a boss. She's kind of still yeah. who she is. So the integrity character is exactly the same. But since this is more for preschool, yeah, they said, give us your take on her. So I gave them, I believe, two takes, um, one a little stronger and then one far more loony and crazy and toony. <laughs> and um, just to show them range, I think that's important when you do auditions, is, is especially when a character like that comes in, you, you you know that it's it's one that you really want or that really you connect with, which is what I felt for her because I've known her, I've known her forever as as you've known all your care. You like we are we get attached in a certain way. Um, so yeah, it was it was my own take on Lola and how I wanted her to sound. And I forgot about the fact that oh she's female and I just went for she's a Looney Tune. She's just a goofy, funny um boss because she runs a construction company with bugs so I just made her as fun as possible while also you know she's the one who pulls in the reins and all the other Looney Tunes because things get wacky in that world so, so I yeah, made her she's, headstrong she's just Lola Bunny yeah. she's just Lola she's Bunny, Lola Bunny. Yeah. yeah yeah that's yeah, it completely. <laughs> and of course I've seen you do a few media stuff with Eric Bowers no cut you're like quite close with Eric you're like close friends aren't you so like um how yeah. would you, oh, how, yeah. you obviously you get along really well so how have you how, how's like your friendship sort of like become stronger during the recording the Bugs Bunny Builders have you ever have you recorded together or have you just really met each other outside of sessions yeah. or virtually or I'll... mainly outside of sessions actually so uh you know I've known his work for as long as I've been in this <laughs> as well so it was an honor to be able to book this and then see Bob Bergen is our, our porky and then Eric Bowser is everyone <laughs> so um we don't get to record together unfortunately I wish we did because I would love to be in a booth with these guys and and see how we all work together but um, yeah, we, we keep in touch. The first time I ever actually met him was when uh, we decided to do coffee one day. We're like, well, we're on this show. We started recording. Let's grab coffee. I'm, I'm here in Los Angeles. He's here in LA as well. And we meet for coffee. And then he says, I have to show you something. Come with me. <laughs> and then we drive over to the WB studio and we see our billboard for Bugs Bunny Builders on the wall for WB. And it was just such a iconic moment for so many different reasons because first it's a show that I'm series regular on it is a Looney Tunes show <laughs> and then I'm there with Eric Bowser for the first time it was yeah it was a dream I think I made a whole reel about it because it was just such a cool day but Ooh. yeah we've we've grown very close over this time yeah. well, you should be you should be proud of yourself for what you've accomplished so far I mean you're on a billboard you're Harley Quinn you're Lola Bunny oh my gosh like uh, I know because yeah. you, you went to visit your family over Christmas I believe I saw on your Instagram so what do your family uh think yeah. uh what do your family think about uh your career as a voice actress um well, of course they're very supportive of course like why wouldn't they be it's a, such a wonderful job but like what, yeah. what do what do they what do yeah. they think about it what's that say? Oh, they, they love it. And they're so proud. And it's nice to hear them say that because yeah, I do come from, you know, the Indian background, traditional family, and they understand I'm here in LA, I'm a creative and they they couldn't be more happy for me. And it's nice to hear that when I'm in India, and I hear them telling their friends and uh, my cousins talking about it and everything because you know, 
I'm no doctor. I am no <laughs> brain surgeon, <laughs> like a lot of uh, what is typically expected when you come here. But they love that I'm doing what I want to do. And I execute in a way where I just am determined to make sure I'm, you know, uh, yeah, doing my goal <laughs> here for my mission. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, they're very proud. It was really fun to tell them about all my projects. I love the diversity as well, because of course you've got an Indian background, you're voicing characters like Harley Quinn and stuff like that. How do you feel like yeah. sort of be that sort of the, the woman representing like, um, like um, the Indian community, like people of sort of like, you know, people of color from that sort of background, like exactly. Yes, I've, yes it's amazing. It right. And yes, completely. And I get messages every day on, on, you know, social media, Instagram, Twitter, of people writing me from India. A lot of my fan base comes from India, which is really? amazing. I'm not sure even air there but it's oh. because these are iconic wb characters that they have heard of it and they follow the brand of harley quinn and batman and, <laughs> and yeah yeah. So, yeah it's it's amazing to have this kind of support that i do from the community because yeah there needs to be more south asian representation out there <laughs> yeah definitely i do agree with that and speaking of harley quinn of course Oh, like when I'm back wheels, another Carson Nito show that um like Bugs Bunny builds. Yeah. I mean, it's weird to think that Carson Nito was new over there in America because over here we've had Carson Nito for at least the past 15 years. It was very different back then. We had oh, wow, sure what we had um we had I know I remember seeing Tom and Jerry Kids on it, a pup named Scooby Doo, a few British shows and stuff like that. I think I can't remember off the top of my head. Just a lot of old preschool shows wow. and stuff like that, that used to air I have to, I have to probably give you a full history of the whole <laughs> Carlton UC UK and then um it was recently rebranded to obviously match the uh the, the US you know, the US look um and we've also now got all the shows from the US block I mean I went to my friend's house the other day and his cousin was watching Bat Wheels <laughs> I, oh, was wow. like, I was like I was like I was like, I was like, wow. And because I'm a huge DC fan, of course, when yes. the casting was announced and I saw your name, I was like, hmm, I wonder who she is. And I looked at your background. I'm like, oh, you're Lola Bunny as well. Oh my gosh, she has got so much under her belt. I mean, I I, I think this was, this may have been before, was this before or after I met met Mick? Or for those of you who don't know, Mick Winger voices the Joker in the series. Um, mm -hmm. And it's basically uh, Shantanese partner in crime essentially um I'm trying to think yeah before or after <laughs> but he's yeah it oh no I think it might have been before I, I don't know but um I remember because when we did the interview he couldn't reveal his Joker voice because it hadn't been released and oh. this was like last summer yeah so yes. I don't know I have to I have to try and find out there's me just going off task and googling about the voice actors uh, so whilst I do that and find oh. out you know when it was all announced um how did you get the role of Harley Quinn? What was the audition process like? Was it hard for you? I mean, of course, you're stepping into the boots of people like Arlene Sorkin, who half originated yes. the character, Tara Strong, yes. Kinnan Walsh, you know, just like all these people. Completely, yes. Legends of our industry. I, I was, when I saw the audition for her, of course, thrilled, immediate connection, because I know this girl. <laughs> I love this girl. And I I took it very seriously. So I know what her voice sounds like. I know what Arlene Sorkin sounds like. Uh, and then, of course, what Tara Strong sounds like. And I knew there's going to be so many people that are auditioning for this. I'm not going to try to replicate anyone. I'm going to give my original take, my original version of her while keeping, while keeping the integrity of the character still who she is. So uh, I knew that, you know, they, they, they know who sounds like who. And so I was trying to stay away from whoever's currently still doing Harley because there are several people, there's several different versions of her, of course. But um, yeah, I researched just the depth of her and how playful she is and the trauma that she's faced. And of course, this is a cartoon uh, kids show as well. The demographic is very young. So I didn't make her too dark. I wanted her to be more mischievous than, than, you know, villainous, <laughs> just more playful, more teenage angst versus uh, anything to do with dark. I was not trying to keep her dark. So it was a lighter play on Harley, which is right up my alley because I do like the more staying on the more playful. We're just here to have fun, cause trouble, break some things, but it's all in good fun. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, I, I did get a little animation of what she looked like too. So I got to see what she, who she was and her colorful hair and just 
she has a smile on her face. I'm like, she she doesn't mean trouble. She's just trouble follows her. <laughs> so when I auditioned just, for her, yeah, I kept yeah. <laughs> yeah, just looking at her now, she like has the sort of the highlights in her hair, like taken from like the Suicide Squad yeah. version of her. So it's kind of like mashing up that sort of version. And it reminds me as well because I remember when Jake and the Neverland Pirates first there, the part of Captain Hook, Corey Burton, um, he was kind of, you know, because of how like, you know, dark Captain Hook is, you know, he was, he didn't know how to bring yeah. it, in, incorporate it into a preschool show. So he sort of turned it, it was Kelly Ward actually, he came up with the idea, sort of turn it into a vaudeville act with him and Smee. Like do comedic duo so that's how it kind of transitions into preschool shows and speaking of Harley, oh wow cute yeah i'd like to i like to show you something now this is approved by arlene sorkin herself she has seen this art but uh, i did little uh canvas of harley <laughs> oh my goodness that's so good i know <laughs> it's just arlene so... sorkin that yeah she loves it and wow. like yeah oh, my i know goodness. i'm in touch with her son so um she uh, she usually gets um you know oh, messages wow. to, to, she gets messages like passed through her son to her but it's like you know not not very often because like you know it's just like once every that's amazing few months or something like that just like check in and stuff like that so wow um did you cry I, I mean that's time? incredible you know more oh, oh I was gonna say you know more yeah. Batman legends than I do by the way <laughs> like personally oh, <laughs> um I had a look and it turns out the the villains cast was announced in May of last year, so it was after I met Nick. Because I remember going on Twitter saying, "I can't believe I met the Joker before he became oh. the Joker." <laughs> yeah, that was quite funny, to be fair. And I remember hearing oh, yours. Oh wow, Nick's that is so like, cool! I was just amazed because I was at the I time. Have I have to watch obsessed. your interview with him. Yeah. Oh, at the time, I was obsessed with Batman. Oh my I, goodness. I, I did say to him, I want to do another interview with you when Bat Wheels is out so he can finally do the Joker voice for me. I'll have to chase up with him, actually. Um, oh, what's I going to say? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because at the time, yeah. I was in a Batman fuzz. Uh, so, like, I was obsessed with Batman the Animated Series and stuff like that. So, did you grow up watching Batman and Harley Quinn and Batman the Animated Series or any sort of animated media? And to voice oh, yeah. Harley Quinn now, what, would you have dreamt it? Dreamed you have Completely. it? Completely. Hmm. no I mean they don't send characters like this out often when you get this audition you're like wow they're looking for a another version and you voice for Harley Quinn of course you don't know that's going to happen in your lifetime when you grow up watching Batman animated series and hearing Kevin Conroy as Batman and legend. yeah and then it, it is really exciting to wait to see legend and just to wait to see what the cast list is of like okay who's my Batman is it Kevin and um, you know, we have Ethan Hawke, <laughs> of course, Ethan which Hawk. he's great, but you know, I, I would have loved to work with or at least been in the same show as Kevin Conroy because, yeah, rest in peace. It was very, yeah, I mean, you're very fortunate to have met him. <laughs> very oh, fortunate. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yes. I met him uh, briefly, but it was fun. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so what was your question? <laughs> oh, it was just really, it was really about, uh, did you grow up watching mm -hmm. Batman the Animated Series? That was oh, cool. yes, yes, absolutely. Ah. Yeah, his his legendary voice is, is my Batman by far. And um, yeah, Arlene Sorkin and, and everything. She's, she was always my, my Harley. <laughs> so when I was auditioning for uh, Harley Quinn, I was listening to her and I watching, you know, Batman, Harley Quinn scenes and everything and taking note of her voice, her accent, her, <laughs> uh, her giggle, everything. Yeah. Ah, that's so cool. Yeah, I would have wow. never thought that this would be a possibility. Yes, absolutely. Well, it is. This is the world we're living in right now. <laughs> yeah. It's a reality. Um, yes. <laughs> so what other cartoons did you grow up watching, exactly? Or like TV shows, kids TV shows, any sort of TV shows growing up? Uh, TV shows, yeah, everything. I loved, um, you know, uh, so I would spend almost every summer in India growing up. So they would have a bunch of their cartoons too, and they would sometimes air a little later. Uh, so we would, I would watch things like Johnny Bravo, uh, Tom and Jerry, Animaniacs. There was, uh, let me see. Yeah, the Looney Tunes. I was a huge Sailor Moon fan growing up. So <laughs> cartoons like that. Uh, yeah, there was, yeah. Simpsons um yeah Looney Tunes was probably one of the biggest ones that I watched though because that was pretty universal especially when I'm summering in India and it's 
very hot there <laughs> in the summer. But yeah, we always had bugs and Batman and, and all of these. And now you're Lolo and Harley Quinn. <laughs> you literally grew up like, wow. like us. Yes. Wow, I'm I'm proud of you. And I'm saying that from the heart. I really am. Thank you. Oh, Amber, you're so sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. Oh, my gosh. So have you got any projects that yes. you can talk about if it's not being hidden by an NDA? Not right now. I am working on a few things. Nothing that I can mention yet, but I- I'm sure I'll let you know and let the world know as soon as I can. <laughs> Yeah, very busy. But That's yeah, good. there's a few things right now. Ooh, yeah, there so are. Exciting. And, you know, a lot of the shows are still recording. So I am constantly in session and everything, which is amazing. But yeah, adding on new projects is always my favorite to balance that schedule. <laughs> it's always fun. That's exciting. Yeah, you ever, yeah you do um, voiceover. Oh, oh. So, so, so say that again. Sorry. I, I was going to say, you, you do voiceover yourself, right? You do a lot of uh, work. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. And you have such in-depth knowledge. I'm so proud of you. You're <laughs> for you to put together all of this as well with with your background and also doing auditions. I know how much work it is. So yeah. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Yeah, so you've interviewed me. some legends. Yeah. Yeah, you always well. I mean, you've already worked with some legends, of course. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so have you ever done a recording session with anyone else or have all your recording sessions just been by yourself? Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, let me see. So I, I did Loud House. The sessions for Loud House, I got to where I actually worked with Tara Strong. That was the first place I met her, which was incredible. And she's the sweetest. <laughs> so that was really fun. Um, yeah, I got to be in the same booth with her and, uh, Great Elise and and watching them work is just watching masters at work. Just brilliant. I am see, I have <laughs> that's amazing. I've only worked with her. I haven't hugged her yet. <laughs> oh man, yeah. That's so, so, so sweet. Honestly, I've met a lot of them and they're just so such great people. I'm seeing Tara again this um May. Oh. And yeah, I'm just excited. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. She's incredible, yes. Completely. So for Loud House. That's when we were doing ensemble records. And then after 2020, um, which is when a lot of the stuff that I booked started going into production, they shut down all of the you know ensemble records. So I've been doing a lot of it here from home and they'll pull me into this uh, studio every now and then, but it's usually just me and the engineer and then everybody else on Zoom, which you know I miss everybody live, but I guess it's more convenient and <laughs> safer for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hey, um, would you ever do any conventions, maybe like voiceover conventions, maybe like a comic con? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my first comic con was actually last year. I did get to go uh, with the Bugs Bunny crew. So Bugs Bunny Builders, we went and I went with Eric and, and everybody. So that was that was the first time I was ever at a comic con, let alone <laughs> got to like sign autographs. <laughs> It was a San Diego Comic Con by any chance? Yeah, I thought yes. it might have been. Yeah, did it? Did it just yeah. Bat Wheels related? I'm. So, I swear they did something Bat Wheels related for that as well. They did do a Bat Wheels related thing. I was uh, doing the Bugs Bunny builders at the time, and I don't think they were doing like the the other characters. I think uh, it was the main crew <laughs> that they were doing for right. Bat Wheels. Yeah. That must have been so yeah. cool, though. Like, you just, but, you're going backstage and just being a VIP. Like, yeah. mm, it was the coolest say? experience. Yeah. Uh, those yeah. are going to say something and then it kind of, like, cut off and some of those I, things. Oh, and... I'm, yeah, completely. I am totally going to be doing Comic-Cons <laughs> in the future. I had such a great experience and I know it's going to be hard to match that. But at the same time, a lot more of my characters are out now and I have more coming. So I can't wait to jump on and meet all the fans live i'm so thrilled about it i can't wait <laughs> you have to be the, you have to be uh uh the first one um well you have to i'll have to be the first one you let you, you let know that i'm you know coming to england definitely yes absolutely i would love to go to england oh my goodness <laughs> no yeah i was i was wondering if you'd ever been there before or not I haven't. I uh well actually i i have but it was through a layover so i think i spent maybe like 12 hours roaming the streets which I can't say I got had a fair shot at it. I didn't stay the night. <laughs> Just yeah. That's went and wandered around. <laughs> that, that's yeah, right. but I would love to. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah I've got all over <laughs> to Have explore. you been out here to LA? I want to. I want to come out to LA. Um, it's been my goal for about four Yeah. years. No, yeah, four years, I'd say. Uh, and uh, nearly got it this year. And then, of course, my passport decides to take its time to arrive. And then I have to go to all these interviews because it's my first passport. But, but oh, I love your mug. I love your mug. <laughs> I'm not Yeah. a Oh, crew thank related you. My gig builder that you've got. man. I love it oh and um so with this whole passport thing it's been really annoying because of it's like my first passport and um it, like I'm having to go to like different interviews and stuff to confirm my identity and it's just saying I'm doing if done this information wrong then I've just screwed Oh, up my wow. application and stuff and uh I don't know when it's going to be here but I've got an interview next month so my parents are like okay look next spring we promise and I'm like I've been, at it. I've been waiting nearly five years and like I just want to come over I just want to come over and meet everyone because I mean my family is like well okay Amber who wants to meet you I mean well I mean the people probably do want to meet you but everyone will be too busy Yes. for doing voiceover and stuff I'm like hmm, I think 25 six seven eight people beg to differ and I just ask people I'm like oh yeah I want to meet you I want to meet you I want to meet you I can get you into Disney I can get you into DreamWorks Nickelodeon Oh, good. whatever I'm like oh my you guys <laughs> Good. yeah And completely. Oh, you come on over. We will fully embrace you. I mean, you are. <laughs> <laughs> honestly we would it love does to have you it does sound like a lot of fun to be fair I mean I mean voiceover is just like it doesn't even sound like a job you just get to play all day with your vocal box yes completely use your imagination my favorite thing is the character creation you get to do in it so even like doing a voice like carly yes we know who she is we know what you know what she generally sounds like but after that it's all play. These lines are all different. So how does she react in a moment? And, and you don't know until you're reading the lines and you get in dial into the character. So yeah, it's so much fun. It's, it's interesting. You use the word play because I feel very, I feel like that's exactly what I get to do when I get into the booth is like, let it all go <laughs> and see what yeah happens. yeah and is Yeah. that the character that you've always wanted to voice Yes, <laughs> I can definitely say, um, oh, is there one specific? Uh, let's see. I don't know if there's a care. You know, I don't know if there was ever a possibility of voicing like Lola Bunny or Harley Quinn. So I don't know if I've ever put it out there that like, this is who I would like to voice because it just seems like there's so many talented people out there. Um, but yeah, you know, I would love to do sometime. I haven't had anything with Disney. Disney yet I would love to voice some kind of Disney character um I don't want to say princess because she doesn't have to be a princess but <laughs> that kind of, of theme would be really fun too if I could portray some kind of Indian you know Disney story <laughs> it would be really fun for me Yeah, you have that's the probably three the companies. one thing I, I could think of You have three yeah companies exactly on your hand: Disney, Warner Brothers, Nickelodeon. I mean, you've mastered Disney, and uh, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to do it with my fingers. Uh, I don't look like I'm flipping you off anyway. Um, uh, Disney and um, uh, there we go, Nick Nickelodeon. There we go. I'm trying to trying to get that finger. Thankfully, it wasn't. Well, wait, That's hard. hang on. No, hang on. I've. I said you did Disney and Nickelodeon instead of Warner Brothers and Nickelodeon. I Warner am so Brothers. sorry. That's Look, all right. That's look, all right. it's it's eleven p.m. at night. <laughs> My Oh, bedtime I was wondering is. what time it is there. And you're wearing a Disney sweatshirt, right? Is this Yeah, what this is? no Are fees. they? Yeah. How oh, cute. I got Well, it there from you Costco. go. I got. I got Warner Brothers. You've got Disney on. Nikki. We're fully representing. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> representing brands. Oh, that's so cool. Like, oh, because I was going to say, because like, you've never done a voice for Disney. I've never done a voice for Warner Brothers. <laughs> I've never done Oh, a voice wow. for any of them. Nice. Yeah, I've Nice. really, I haven't even really done theme park ride and a corn operated ride and I'm working on my demo, you know, getting out there a little bit more, but You have we'll see. a theme park ride? Um, you, you voice one of the theme park rides? Yeah. Oh, that's incredible, Amber. Which one? I've got to go write it immediately. Uh, it's not at a specific park and it's not open yet. It opens next year. <laughs> It's uh, called Cooper ooh. Jones. Ooh. It's a dark ride. It's in California. Um, I don't Ooh. exactly know what park it's going to yet. I don't think it'll be revealed until it actually opens, but I voiced four characters on the ride. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Thank That is, you. that's, 
that's iconic. <laughs> Good for you. That's like a, a life account, like goal for a lot of people. Thank you. I, I, I think like some of them are actually animatronics. So just to get a copy of that animatronic and just fly it back over, just like, oh, yeah. yes, I've got this sitting in my office. <laughs> <laughs> it's staring at me I'm just like hmm um have you got any Lola Bunny Harley Quinn merchandise at all maybe it could be DVDs t-shirts plushies anything I do I have a ton of Harley Quinn t-shirts I was actually gonna wear one for this but it was so distracting and I was like I'll just do something subtle <laughs> right now I'll send me a picture um, but I'm intrigued now <laughs> I, I will I completely will it's the one of her and Joker embracing each other <laughs> but it just seems really busy um I have I bought her bat. This is more the Suicide Squad, but I got like the memorabilia of the bat that Margot Robbie carries, as mm-hmm. well as at Comic Con. I bought my first Harley Quinn uh, print. So yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty cool. So I'm here to start collecting. That's for sure. I might. I must have others, but I can't think of others right now. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, I have an idea. When is when's your birthday? May I ask? What day's your birthday? August fifth. August 5th okay right I've got to remember I'm gonna write that on my calendar because I have because I'm an artist because I want to draw some art for you all right I might as well say what it is now it's Harley and Lola I picked it now Harley and Lola around a birthday cake Harley trying oh yeah oh no Harley trying to blow out the candles and then Lola's just like got it's like the meme where it's like the kid blowing out the candles and then the parents like putting the paper plate over their mouth it's just Lola doing that to Harley (laughs) oh it's that is like, so cute you're so genius for thinking of that, that image just like that <laughs> that's a brilliant image and so harley and lola <laughs> i know oh man i can't wait to draw oh, i would man. love that by the way i will frame it i will yes <laughs> i will fly it out to you i will come out uh to that, like fly it i'll fly it with me and i'll give it to you in person and sign it as well <laughs> Come on out. I will. We will go. We'll, I'll make Eric come and grab lunch. <laughs> oh, yeah. People have promised, like, I have asked, oh, yeah, what's the best uh, coffee <laughs> shop, restaurant, drink place and stuff? And they're like, they're naming all these different places and stuff. And they're like, oh, yeah, there's one in Burbank. Oh, yeah, there's one near the Warner yeah. Brothers. There's one in Disneyland. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Because I remember looking at Google Maps and seeing yeah. this. I never realized how big California is until now. And then I saw Los Angeles. I'm like, oh, my gosh it's huge and just going up and down these streets and stuff seeing all these big buildings and stuff and I'm thinking like because it's like all like sort of like horizontal and vertical roads but then like on the UK it's like squiggle squiggle roads (laughs) (laughs) yes yes Uh, it's completely different from um each each country and I I like I like that sort of uniqueness yeah um yes completely is there a country that you'd like to travel to besides the UK besides the UK uh there's a lot of countries I would love to still visit I haven't really explored much of Africa so I would love to go there um I've never been yeah I think anywhere in South Africa so I love to travel I've been I've traveled a lot through Asia and Europe um the Middle East but going to like Zimbabwe or Zanzibar sounds awesome (laughs) so yeah good. yeah Sounds good. yeah I don't know if it's happening anytime soon you'll be traveling sooner than I am that's for sure <laughs> yeah because I, I have a trip planned to Spain uh, in a few months so just to visit family Ooh. over there oh my um, goodness and, and yeah. I, I, I'm mainly going I was I wasn't gonna go at first but then I found out they've got a Warner Brothers theme park in Madrid so I'm going <gasps> and they have walk around oh my goodness characters, and I'm like and they got Batman like meet and greets and shows with like Joker and Harley Quinn and stuff, and then the Batman Superman roller coaster. Just thinking, oh my, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I want to go! I want to go. That is so fun. I yes, know. that's gonna be a blast. That's that's so cool. You get to go there. When do you go? Uh, May, I think. I think there's one in Madrid, and then of course you've got the Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia, and then you've got the one in Dubai as well. So it's like there's three in the world, and then you've got the one in Madrid, Spain. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. gonna be a blast! I can't wait to see your photos from that. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, but, I, mean, too, I can't wait to experience it. I mean, it's my first time going abroad, so you know, just going to complete. I mean, I'm learning Spanish oh. and Duolingo, so I'm just like trying to get as much as I can learn because I'm visiting family oh, yeah. over there who are bilingual. Um, so it's really just you know, just like yeah. you know, it's my first time, my first ever time abroad in another country. 
so exciting for me. Well, you're going to do so well. <laughs> Thank you, oh. Anthony. Oh, they're going to love oh. you there. You seem to have a very, like, such a sweet personality. I'm, I'm sure everywhere you go, people are just charmed. So <laughs> you'll have a great time. And you'll Thank find you that the language barrier isn't really an, an issue when it comes to just yeah, they'll feel you and, and body language is much louder. So yeah, <laughs> you'll have a blast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Uh, I'd like to ask you a few <laughs> little fun questions before we round off this okay. interview. Um, what, what would you say your ideal weekend yeah. activity is besides voiceover, doing voiceover? I love spending time in nature. So for me, that's a... Mm. Uh, yeah, I, you know, uh, we we live close enough to the beach here in LA. So if I could just go see the ocean, especially not right now, we happen to be raining right now. So, but Aww. typically, yeah, summers are what I live for. So uh, spending time at the beach, hiking, and you know, just relaxing because the weeks are so busy and they're fun. But it's nice to just kind of relax and not, not have any plans. I usually just wing it on my weekends because, yeah, it's nice to just go through what you feel and if that means I'm gonna binge a show I'm gonna binge a show <laughs> good idea good idea um yeah yes dream celebrity to work with oh goodness that's hard or voice actor <laughs> oh uh that is so hard it can be in any way either meeting them or being in this be, even being in the same show as them yeah, so, yeah, yeah credit, the credit good. screen the hard uh, questions. Let's see. I guess well, I've I've worked with with Gray release before, but I just had such a cool experience watching her work that I think I would love to to do that again. There were so many people if for Loud House. There's so many people in the booths when you're recording, so I, it's not like I got one on one time to play with her. But I love her, <laughs> and watching her read the script, it was like my line my line and then she was the rest of the characters and she doesn't even like she doesn't need take one she just reads with herself I pop in <laughs> and she was reading with herself I say my line and then she's like three characters more and I'm like that was one page she does this for the whole yeah I would love to work with her again even though I have already <laughs> she would be a dream because I would yeah. just pick her brain and ask her all the questions and um just see how her mind works she's brilliant Good choice, um, good choice. Yeah, completely. Hmm. Yeah. Who's your favorite Batman villain that isn't Harley? I mean, it could be Harley Quinn, but okay. who else would you say is your favorite Batman villain? Uh, it's definitely Harley Quinn. I feel like she just has so much depth to her. And I, I, and I understand her. And I understand, you know, the, the pain where it all comes from and why she is how she is, I guess. There's so much empathy for her character. Yeah. And calling her a villain is like sure but oh. this is why <laughs> like she had a really yeah. rough <laughs> who's your yeah. other favorite that isn't tarly oh, i hate to say joker i just find them so interesting with their <laughs> you can say the joker if you want i love the joker i've always been a big fan of his character i mean he's he's also very fun very uh just to he's intelligent and you got to respect a character that's intelligent playful and really makes you think <laughs> the way that he does and how well thought out his plans are and, Indeed, yeah and yes. he's a very eccentric dresser I'm impressed oh, with his yes, outfit of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he stands out <laughs> what is your favorite color Ooh, uh, color purple I like purple purple I thought a lot of people yes. say purple hmm, that's a yeah good what's your favorite color ah hmm, yellow <laughs> Oh, I love yellow too. Yellow is a good color. <laughs> yeah, like uh, like a lot of my clothes are yellow. A lot of my, you know, just like stuff I have in my room is yellow. Like I have yellow plushes, nice. you know, just like anything, you know. Um, what's your favorite topping on a pizza? Uh oh, this one is controversial, and I don't want to say, but I will. Love anything controversial. <laughs> I happen to love a good pineapple. <laughs> mm. <laughs> me. Oh, man. I know. Pre but they're yellow. Salad they're salad now. Salad now. <laughs> I also yeah. like mushrooms. I'm happy with oh. mushrooms, pineapple. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm Rick a plain mushrooms. person. I like, <laughs> I like, you know, I just like to, you know, with, with this show. I like, love cheese. 
me too, me too. And tandoori chicken, that is a, uh, that's a very unique one. You know, Domino's do a quite good tandoori oh. chicken. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's like spicy I... chicken. Yeah. That sounds that sounds nice too. Sweet, spicy. <laughs> yeah. And with with this show basically, I don't like it to be formal, you know, like most of the podcasts are, you know, like upright and just firing in uh, questions and sticking yeah. on topic. With 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 yeah. this show, I just like to go off topic, off the rails. We discuss anything, yeah. goes topic, it just keeps going off topic and it's just basically just like a con a back and forth conversation and it doesn't feel like Okay, good, feel yeah. Fixed or like set or set up. Or anything like yeah. that it just feels like it's just casual chat that's just it's just how it rolls yeah amazing great and you're so good at it too you're so comfortable oh, thank you great. thank you Shandy. <laughs> and my final question yeah. is um, okay i gotta think this one over because i've just completely it was in my head and then it just completely <laughs> and now it's just come back to me um it's stuck in your ears yeah it's just, it's just, it's, i've just got it back in my head um what sort of advice <laughs> would you give to people who are just starting out in voiceover? Maybe it could be a piece of advice that you heard when you were starting out, maybe. But what, what would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, being authentic and being spontaneous, trusting yourself. I think authenticity is probably the most important lesson because we can't try to replicate anyone. Um, and, and if we do, they, whoever they're replicating can do it better. So it's good to bring your own who you are into the role and let that be your voice print of, of who you are and have your own trademarks because I think that's what gets remembered. And those spontaneous moments where you just trust yourself and you you just go for something and use your instincts is where all the where all the gold is. <laughs> it's all, yes. all the juices in those moments where you don't even know what's going to come out, but you're so engulfed inside the character that it's it just dominates you and you're able to just really play with the words at that point so yeah just being authentic being yourself and not trying to do it right doing it wrong is much better than trying to do it right because there is no right people don't know what they're listening for unless until they hear it and it's that trust in that authenticity that comes out I think in the auditions of what stands out because otherwise everybody's sending in the same lines and that is so boring. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, just putting it's some life behind it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're far, I can tell. I bet your auditions are golden. <laughs> oh bless. Yeah, very, very good <laughs> advice. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Shantani, you've been fantastic, phenomenal, mind blowing, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> oh thank you thank you so much amber it's such a pleasure meeting you i'm so proud of you and all the work that you do and the research and the uh yeah just keeping all these characters and the voice artists alive by by interviewing them <laughs> it's it's fantastic oh, to put the voice with the name and yeah thank you Anthony. where can we find you on social media where can my viewers find you on the internet so I'm on Twitter, Instagram, as well as TikTok. I think that's all of them. Yeah. So it's Chandani Paddock underscore. And that's my handle for our, all three of those. So just my full name underscore. <laughs> okay. I'll get those links in the description. So Thank you. To you at home. You're welcome to you at home. Thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF. I've been joined by the wonderful Shanti Parekh and I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video. And as always, stay safe, stay happy, be kind to yourself and to others. And we'll see you around. Bye. And cut.